Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mad Jazz Show. Man, it's been a long time since I did the last episode. I think the, the last one was, what, roughly about a month ago. And just been uh, really busy with uh, family stuff and uh, Christmas, New Year's and all that, but really appreciate everyone for giving me the, the comments and the, on Facebook, on YouTube, hoping that the show is going to be back soon, so really appreciate that. And I uh, got some uh, news from uh, this year, is I actually got some new scenes that I'm able to use because uh, my family got me some of the, the software upgrades for the broadcasting thing, so lo and behold I got more than one camera angle now, so really happy about that and just like to say thanks to my family for hooking me up for Christmas, that was really awesome. It's kind of strange being so big on the screen now, but... Yeah, I've got some other cool uh, effects that I can do during the show now with the, the new software upgrades, and got a really cool guest lined up for today. Uh, his name is Derek Leslie, and uh, yeah, we sort of just met recently, but he does uh, some work in UFOs and uh, the truth movement. I believe he's also a leader. So yeah, definitely going to get uh, Derek on the show soon. Uh, I guess I'll just uh, read his introduction here before we get started. All right, so uh, Derek studied and researched uh, religions and UFOs for about seven years. And he is 27 and lives in Boston, Massachusetts, I believe that is. His uh, current work is to bring awareness about extraterrestrial life and open people's minds up to advanced alien technology, which includes uh, eternal life, sex robots, consciousness transfer, simulated realities, and much more. So some pretty exciting topics for today. And uh, to bring about a higher global consciousness by affecting as many as he can. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So uh, I guess uh, before I get going, maybe I'll just adjust my green screen here. There we go. All right, so yeah, I think everything's ready to go. I'm going to try getting Derek on the show. We never really got the, the test call going for Skype, so I'll keep my fingers crossed that uh, we're able to connect all right. And let's see here, do I got a scene for that? Yeah, I do. So now everyone can help me pray to the, the Skype cloud and hope that we are able to connect to Derek. So let's let's give that a try right now. All right, let's see, we've got him here in the contacts. All right, we'll set up the video call. Yeah, I'm really wondering how this is gonna work, but Keeping my fingers crossed. Maybe a little bit of luck to, to start the new year. Maybe not. So far, no answer. <laughs> eh, we'll try calling him back. Okay, now I've actually been talking to him on Facebook here, so if I can't reach him here on Skype, I'll give him a quick call on Facebook and see if we can reach him there. Now let's try that again. Oh, video turned off. Alright, let's try that one more time. It's one thing when you use Skype, it sometimes takes a couple tries to get it working. Sometimes you gotta call guests back, but we'll do what we gotta do to get the show going, because really excited to try out the new features for the show. Yeah, maybe we should have done that test call. <laughs> yeah, I'll try giving Derek a message on Facebook and see if I can reach him there. Just try closing a couple of other windows here. Make sure that I don't max out my computer. All right, let's see. I got a message, so let's see if it's from Derek. All right, I'm just going to type him a message, so I'm calling him right now. Oh, I just heard some sort of noise out of Skype, so let's try that again.
Hmm. Very, very interesting. All right, yeah, I did reach uh, Derek on uh, Facebook here. Told him I'm calling right now. He said okay. So I'll close this and try calling him again. All right, wish me luck, folks. Come on, Cloud. Uh, it's really nice of Derek to come on the show last minute here. I've been dying to get another show done. Just uh, Not only was I busy for the holidays, but man, we've just been getting hammered with snow this year. and That's what I do for a living, so... Alright, still not able to connect, so I'll try calling him again. Yeah, hopefully I got the right information here for him. Alright, I hear some more noises and beeps coming from Skype. Hopefully that's a good sign. Oh, here he's calling me. Hey man, what's up? Oh, hey Derek. Glad we got through. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, that's no big deal. Um, uh, yeah. How sorry. are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, thanks. Uh, you're able to hear me all right? I can hear you, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, I read your introduction there to, to the listeners and or the viewers. And... Mm -hmm. um, I guess you're involved with what is it the the truth community? You're a leader for that. Yeah, I've been I've been studying for many years, and um, you know I've I've come across many things, and I look around me in society. I don't I don't see many leaders of it, so I just kind of you know self proclaim myself as a leader because you know I, I see such a lack. No, that, I'm really glad you're doing that because it's it's not easy to be a leader, and it seems like everyone in today's society is just following and following sort of thing, right? So we definitely need more leaders, and I'm really happy to see some more young people stepping up to the plate for that. It's like it's not only Trump that's going to be doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, I'm trying to trying to rally the younger people around me, but it's hard. It's hard for them because they're so involved. They want to. Um, want to live their life of fun you know they want they want to go out there and, and they, they live a life of ignorance in many of them unfortunately yeah no i've been going at this for i don't know i guess close to 30 years now so i've seen it definitely develop like that where times keep changing getting more stressful for people and they just keep like indulging in mindless entertainment as much as possible to try to get like the stress out of their lives from the money and the, the economic collapses and all that sort of thing so in a way it's like I'm, I'm a little bit pissed off that people aren't paying attention to this but i totally understand why right right yeah i mean it's it's hard to explain, but ultimately, it's just that they were led down a road that did, they they weren't awakened. They were they were thrown into high school, you know. They were thrown into college, and their whole world is revolving around money. Yeah. And and basically, these textbooks that they learn from, it's it's all inaccurate. I mean, a lot of it's not really what's going on. So yeah, you no, can't I, really blame them a lot of times. Yeah. No, I do a lot of work with the ancient history research and. It's like, man, every time people keep criticizing me, saying that the textbooks are saying stuff different than I am, and it's like, man, textbooks get updated all the time, so it's like, you really can't get caught up in what was established history before, but really got to keep progressing sort of thing, right? Can't get stuck in the past, man. Right, yeah, it's, uh, there's just, it's just overwhelming, like, you know, the stuff that's hidden, and it's hard, it's hard to, I mean, if, you, if you're given all the information, you can't even be given all the information in, like, one day. I mean, you... And it's too overwhelming. I mean, for me, yeah. it's taken many years to even begin to kind of put it together where I'm not, it doesn't affect my mind, you know, because it can. It can make people hallucinate. It can make them have these these crazy ideas because it's so it's so infinite, you know. It's so crazy to, to, to think about sometimes. No, it's easy to get lost in the research, right? Because like some people dedicate their whole lives to it. I know I'm guilty of that. And you really got to try to balance it out with doing regular people stuff so that you don't get too, too like in over your head sort of thing, right? It's a lot to take in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, there's a balance of it, but 
too many people, it seems, you know, I, I mean, but what I'm finding really is, is that a lot of people are prepared. They're ready f to, for aliens. I mean, they're ready for extraterrestrials. I mean, I talk to many people and I think that the work that people like us do, there's mm -hmm. so much online now. I mean, YouTube's been out for what, like 10 years now. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's flooded with all of this type of stuff and um, it just daily it's stuff is added in the archives of the internet and it's hard to miss, really, and if you just type in the extra thresholds, I mean, you're going to get so much now. Yeah. No, it has almost reached the point where it's overwhelming. Like, uh, if you try to do any research in YouTube, you're going to get just stuck with so many links that are people faking stuff and aren't serious about it. And if anyone is serious, it sort of gets drowned out in that, right? Yeah, and that, that's another problem. You have a lot of people that are, they like to troll, they like to, and you know, I mean, I don't know why they like to do it. I mean, I just feel like they're bored, and they don't yeah. really know. No, I was, watching, lonely, you know? I was watching some of your videos. I can't believe how many trolls you got following you, right? How did you get such a following going? <laughs> I'm not 100%. I mean, it, some, someone told me there was a Facebook page. It's called, like, Dark Humor, and I guess one of them got a hold of my live feed, and they just all came on. And, no kidding. But, yeah. No, geez, I'm kind of hoping that that happens to me one day, just so I can get some more comments in my YouTube feed. <laughs> I know, I, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't find it, because, yeah, it was, but then they shut my live feed down, so now I, I have to wait. I don't know if they'll let me go live again, or I'll have to make another account, we'll see. Yeah, no, it's, uh, everything is getting strict now with uh, the Facebook live feeds and stuff, and I keep getting all these crazy friend requests from fake accounts, like almost two or three a day yeah. now, and. Uh, I don't know what's going on at Facebook, but something weird is definitely happening. Man. Yeah, I read something, you know, yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg, he's trying to cut down on the hate speech. I mean, that's what I was blamed for, hate speech. I don't know if it was because I said the bankers need to to stop banking, you know, or they need to, you know, have, have a new idea of how to live, and I, maybe it was considered hate speech. I don't know. Wow. No kidding. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I was kind of curious, like, how did you get started in all this? I noticed you put in your thing here that you started studying religion and UFOs. Like, did you have some sort of UFO encounter that triggered this? Um, I mean, from a young age, I've always been interested in this, you know, but mainly was I got involved with religion because I, you know, I, a part of me was afraid of what this means. I mean, possibly, you know, I've heard about demons, and so I had to, I had to kind of go through that phase where I had to research all these things and you know i learned much and it took a while for me to come out of the religious phase but yeah you know so yeah that's kind of just i spiraled from just me being curious no oh, no kidding no um, what was i gonna say about religion yeah and so i've gone through my own phases with religion too it's like i grew up in a, a family that had like different backgrounds of religion like orthodox catholic and all the different denominations pretty much you can imagine and yeah, I, I started believing it when I was a kid, and then as I got older, I was like, man, all this stuff is BS, and then and then I went through another phase, too, where I started researching ancient mysteries, and I found that all the texts in the Bible started being confirmed by digs all over the world, and I was like, well, there actually is some truth to like the historical context to the Bible, but I'm not really a big believer in all the, the preaching that they do in it as well, so I guess it's a mixed bag when it comes to religion. <laughs> Yeah, and so, yeah, that's another thing. It's hard for people that even want to seek the truth because that's almost like it's like a web that they have to face usually. I mean, if, if you're interested in the truth and you see the world for how it is, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty corrupt. And then you, you try to seek something high, you can get caught in that religious web. I mean, you have many people out there that you would, you know, you would go to a church to try to, to your pastor. And then your pastor's going to, you know, tell you, you pretty much sometimes, a lot of times they tell you hypocrisies. They tell you they, yeah. they're not interpreting the Bible correctly, and, and honestly, they don't have the faith. It's you know, it says in the Bible, Jesus says, "If you with God, anything is possible." Yeah. And then a lot of these pastors out there say aliens aren't real. So I mean, <laughs> it's it's a blatant hypocrisy, you know. No, that's what I like about my uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church. It's like I haven't really got to talk to the priest much because uh, I don't speak Ukrainian. I wish I did, but it's like you look at the artwork in the church, and they've got the UFOs with beams coming down to the religious scenery and everything and it's like right. there's definitely some ancient like biblical ufos that were that are just not being talked about by the church even though it's all over their walls it's like what the hell is going on yeah right, right. It's, it's almost like they um they don't want to know or they're too afraid to 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 uh expand outside that zone because so many of their friends are priests so many of their friends are in the church if they do try to go outside that box 
you know, they're going to be their their friends, you know, that what they consider friends will will tell them that they can't do that, that, you know, will maybe even label them mentally ill and then say, you know, maybe you should see a psychiatrist. Yeah. No, so it's, it's, it's definitely I, always a concern for people. It's like uh, stress is probably putting more people in the, the loony bin now than ever. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. It's yeah. People are just you know they they don't know where to turn because like I said you turn to you turn to the church you're gonna get you know guilt shame dogma fear and then you turn to psychiatrists they're gonna offer you poison yeah. pretty much but that's what they offer yeah. so it's you know where do you go you know poison that's covered by insurance and insurance it's uh, in with the government and the government just keeps the system going they don't really have any say in it other yeah. than just keep it flowing <laughs> right i mean 95 percent of these psychiatrists that that give out the medications they've never tried the medications they've never put them in their body in their life yeah they're just a lot of them are you know what i mean these these 20 something year old college girls or college guys coming out of, of, of a school that they were taught at that they paid for and then, you know what I mean, they, they believe that false education system. So that's another thing that it's, it's, it really is, it's a massive deception. But at the same time, I think that deception is, is a part of our evolution. It's, you know, we're, pr we we're primitive, at a, a primitive state. And we're, now we're coming out of that primitive state and we're, we're, we're evolving. Yeah. No, it's uh, really sad. I lost actually one of my best friends to a similar situation where uh, he was going through some problems with depression and whatnot and drinking too much. And his uh, doctor ended up prescribing some medication to get him over it. And it turned out that that medication had really bad side effects with anyone who drinks alcohol. Like, so I was like, why would you prescribe something like that to an alcoholic? Right? Like, doesn't seem to right. make any sense. And no, he never really recovered after that. It's like, it really did a number on him. So. Yeah, yeah, you got to be careful. It's like I don't want to be putting doctors down and all this and giving medical advice, but really you got to do a lot of your own homework when it comes to this thing. Right? Yeah, I mean, and, and the side effects are all listed over the internet. I mean, you just have to type in whatever medication, and it's like entire pages of, yeah. you know, muscle weakness, fatigue, all, all these things, you know, deterioration really of the brain. I mean, even. It's, no, those commercials are almost priceless to listen to. It's like it, it cures right. one thing or treats one thing, but has a list of like a hundred different side effects that it's going to cause. It's <laughs> yeah. <like. laughs> but people are like, well, I'd rather be happy and rather not be depressed and I'll, li I'll live with these side effects. They, they, you know, that's what they're, they're teaching that, you know, basically it's like, you know, the, the greater evil or whatever, you know, the greater good outweighs the evil. But, yeah. I mean, the, all the, the reasons why they're depressed is because they live in a world that's totally deceived, totally living a way that they shouldn't be Yeah. overall. You know? I, yeah, I guess on the show today, we're going to cover some of the things that are really out there, but uh, could be happening, like uh, UFOs and uh, aliens and a bunch of other stuff. So maybe I should jump to the, the pictures that you got ready for today. I'll just uh, move your camera over so we can still see you. All right, uh, does it matter to you which order we look at the slides? Or? No, I, I just grabbed random ones. I mean, just real quick. So, I mean, what, whatever, you know, whatever right, you cool. think. Just kind of to discuss. Cool. Yeah, the the first one I had was like a, your old profile image. Uh, I guess it says on here that you were thinking of going for president in 2028. Is that yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's an idea. It's something that I kind of just, I mean, it's 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 kind of a joke, but at the same time, it's, I mean, I really would, but it's like, I'm just, I want people to just see that the truth should be leading. The truth should be, you know, people who do speak about these things, extraterrestrials and all this, shouldn't be something that's so crazy or is considered considered even even a big deal. I mean, I don't think that it's a big deal that extraterrestrials are real. It should just be a common thing. It should yeah. be, you know. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. No, I like the idea of it because it, it sort of presents uh, that anyone can really run for president. You don't have to be a, a billionaire celebrity or something to do it. And really, there should be a lot more people stepping up to the plate. I'm surprised that we see yeah. so few candidates actually trying. Right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like because I think a society really, they, they've, give, they've been taught to give their power over to someone else yeah. without them even knowing what's going on. So. You know, that's the major thing. I mean, what I want to see is a whole entire planet, men and women that are smart, that are leaders. And then we can expand. We can, we can travel the universe and the stars. I mean, there, there was a... 
there's a comment that this man named uh, Ben Rich made. He used to be a former director at uh, Lockheed and Martin, which is like a you know a defense, a military defense, you know high high level technology research facility company. Yeah. Heard all and, about them, yeah. I mean, you know, he said that there anything that we can think of has already been we can do. We we can already travel the stars, we can already do anything you can imagine. And pretty much it's just that it's locked they're locked away in, in black hidden projects. And he said that only an act of God would allow us to to be able to access these things because it's hidden it's you know, pretty much we're being lied to. Yeah. And they take our money and our hard work to 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 lie, you know to lie to us about what they're doing. Yeah. No, it's a uh, it's really weird. It's like uh, what was I going to say there? It's like uh, basically uh, what I'm thinking after all the research I've done is uh, like the the ancient alien theory. I don't know. You've probably heard it mentioned before, but what I think is going on is that the aliens have been here for a long time, and they're pretty much controlling the government and like behind the scenes sort of thing so it's a uh, it's mm. pretty wild that uh, that these aliens might have been here from like day one it's like uh, have you heard yeah. much about the ancient alien theory or looked into that or yeah no i'm i i'm pretty much no i understand that that's what's been going on that that they helped facilitate our evolution that you know i think that everything mankind has been through has been for a reason i don't think that i really don't think that evil has really just had a free reign you know, I don't, I think there's a reason for everything here and, and we just don't fully understand it, you know, fully yet. But I mean, I, I've done a lot of study on this and, you know, I feel that, yeah, there was, there was some stuff that was allowed to be done, may, maybe by extraterrestrial races that were considered selfish, but, but they what they did was for a purpose, which was to help mankind really become strong on their own. So they wouldn't allow these things to happen. Yeah. Kind of to teach them, you know, te you know, pretty much that's what it is. Now, I should show you one of my slides that I got on that. It actually uh, covers what we were just talking about here. It's like uh, this wing disc symbol that's popular all around the world, like in Egypt and stuff. And it's the main symbol for my show. It's like a, the Magi religion is basically the, the, the religion of the Anunnaki. And then their god was this guy in the wing disc, and he has his hand held up like that as like a symbol that he's going to raise the bar of difficulty for humanity, sort of to like push us out of the nest, force us to evolve sort of thing. And that's why our world is so screwed up. It's not because like God's trying to torture everyone or something, but he's trying to get us to that next level sort of deal, right? Yeah, and it's, it's crazy because, you know, eternity is so long, and for us to even try to imagine w what it really takes to keep the universe in order is yeah. it's hard and there's no way I mean, how could we you know and i mean it, it's going to take a while yeah. so i think a part of us is, is we need to learn to respect these extra thresholds as well just like we respect i mean first of all we got to res learn to respect our neighbor and our, our people that we live with and then you know what i mean i also we should respect but but also be able to discern what's a deception and what you know if somebody has a harmful intention you know just to become a you know a responsible strong almost like a warrior a leader you know that that can yeah. just survive through eternity and, and and also even help help teach other beings that may be on a lower level that yeah. you know may be on a level that we are at you know two thousand years ago or, or five thousand years ago it's not going to be foreign to us to re to relate to that we already we've lived it you know, we've seen it, and we, we've, you know, continued to study about it. Yeah. No, it's, um, yeah, this, yeah, it's quite the situation. No, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, this uh, Hura Mazda symbol or the wing disc, it's like I managed to, to trace it to the, the ancient Anunnaki tablets, and they had that same symbol. And it turns out that the Freemasons, like, biggest leader, Albert Pike, wrote that Ahura Mazda, this guy in the wing disc, or the Anunnaki ancient aliens, are their secret meaning to Freemasonry. So it's like almost the Freemasons that are working with these aliens, or Anunnaki, or the ancient aliens, it appears. It, you know, it's, it's, it's very possible that they are, but it's very possible that they, they've hijacked a lot of the symbols. I mean, it's, it's easy to take a symbol and then give it a meaning you know, whatever you kind of want if you have money and power. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that that's exactly what happened with the Freemasons, but I think that in any organization that's like the Freemasons or whatever, there's, you know, just like in everything, there's good and bad in everything. Yeah. And, you know, it, but but we're coming into a time where it's all going to be balanced out. I You know, that's the hope that, 
and that's why I do what I do because it's like there is really a lack of people that are doing that are speaking out and it's not because they don't want to I don't think it's just because they don't know how to they really don't know where to look and then when they do look or when somebody does give it to them they're like they're so flabbergasted they're so confused they even sometimes get, would get scared and you know they'll call you crazy and and so yeah no i get that a lot in my field because uh, i had an, a an sort of like an alien encounter with light beings about uh, when i was around 10 years old so telling people about it and stuff i really got the idea that like most people just don't want to listen to it and are going to call you crazy without even hearing the details about it. As soon as you mention that there's something weird like an alien encounter, they just write it off sort of thing, right? So you got to be careful with who you tell and who you talk to because, man, it can ruin your life if you tell the wrong people sort of thing, right? Right. Yeah, and, you know, there's there's so many different uh, stories out there and, you know, it's it's hard to sort through them all. That's why I say look at them all. Because, you know, it's very possible that some ha you know, some are total lies, some have some lies in them, some have a lot of truth, a little truth. And so it's up to you to, to dive into this personal, this personal um, journey and to, yeah. to, to find out for, your, for yourself. And so people like me, I, I just, I'm still doing it, but I still want to encourage everybody else to do it. Because it's, it's the more people that wake up, you know, the, the, the closer we are for this for a big major shift for for major events to happen now i think we got really close what was it around the 90s when the x-files sort of went mainstream and when the x-files was mainstream then everyone sort of switched over to being okay to talking about it and then as soon as that died off then society shifted back so it's kind yeah. of optimistic in a way that it is possible for this to go mainstream it has before yeah, it's. I mean, you know, people were open to it for sure, but I think there was still a lot of fear. Yeah. There was still a lot of confusion, and, and you know, it, it did, I guess, take a while for it to come out and for a lot of the stuff to be leaked out. And, you know, I feel that everything is being orchestrated correctly, that mm -hmm. it, everything is happening on a high, like at the highest levels of the universe. They, they know what's going on, and they're, they're helping facilitate this. But at the same time, there's still a, there's a friction there. And, 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 you know, whether or not it's a healthy friction or, or if it's a friction, I think it can be healthy in the way where it, it, it motivates us to seek something better. It motivates us. It challenges us. It gives us a reason to live. Yeah. And so, you know, that's kind of, I feel, what's been happening. And, and since the Internet's kind of really exploded in the past, like, 20, 15 years, it's, you know, people are... It's I, I think it's just a common thing to, to wonder if there's extraterrestrials. But now... We should be coming into the point of understanding and, and knowing. And so that's kind of what, you know, I want people to, to know that it's real. And then yeah. to, to, to not be surprised that you can transfer your consciousness into a, another body. You know, this shouldn't be something. But a lot of people could be afraid of that, which I understand. It's kind of, you know, pretty crazy to do. Yeah, You'd it sounds terrifying, that. really. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to mention, too, uh, we're starting to get some people in the live chat going. I'd just like to say thanks to everyone for joining. And anyone who's listening on, uh, what is it, Facebook, if you want to jump over to the Leland Judson YouTube page, you can uh, join us here in the chat and ask any questions. Uh, I tried getting the show going at the same time in Facebook and YouTube, but it was maxing out my processor. So I had to switch it back over to just YouTube. Yeah, I, I posted a link on my Facebook um, I don't know what else I could post. I just have the uh, the website, so cool. the YouTube, I think, actually. Yeah, there's one uh, guy or girl, I guess, here in the chat who's just saying hi to you, uh, F Fatima or Fatima, or I guess. Okay. I don't, yeah. I don't know if you recognize. You know? Yeah, I think that she's on my friends list. Oh, she. Okay, cool. She, she's been. She's heard of. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Alex Collier before? Yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, he's yeah. He's one guy who he claims he's been on the spaceships and all this oh, other yeah? stuff. Nice. Yeah. No, it's funny. I kind of mock people that have their own UFO encounters, and it's so hypocritical because here I'm talking about how I had an encounter with light beings, but for some reason it's like I'm still really skeptical anyone, anytime someone tells me that they've encountered UFOs or aliens. So I'll try not to yeah. laugh and make fun of people about it. It's just a, a natural instinct, I guess. Yeah, it's it's no, it's understandable. I think I think you have to have your own experience, and that's what I want for everybody. It's all about your own personal journey, and to wake to awaken your mind to 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 want them to show up, to want to meet them, to want to have synchronicities, to want to learn. 
that's what's going to, I think, allow them to give you more information and, and make it make it easier for you because it can be fearful. I mean, I can only imagine if somebody's seen a, a 15-foot li lizard being outside their window. Yeah. If they didn't, if they weren't prepared for something like that, they could be terrified to the point of a heart attack. No, I'm know? glad you mentioned that because that's what happened to me when I encountered the light beings. It's like everyone's like, oh, wasn't it amazing getting to see light beings? And I'm like, actually, no, it was horrible. It's like when you see something that crazy, it's like it almost gives you a heart attack. So it's like I could barely move and it's like horrible chest pains. It's not really something I would recommend to people. Right? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, for you, it, that that was may have been that's pro that would is that was required for you to to catapult where you needed to be. I mean, yeah. that that's a part of your own journey. That some people might need a shock like that to do the work that's required that will will help facilitate humanity's you know ascension or whatever you want to call it, evolution. And you know, you're a part of that. No, it was weird. Like, uh, they gave me a coin with the, some ancient symbols on it. And then I've been researching those symbols up north and here in Canada. And the, the discoveries I made up there are almost unreal. It's like uh, I found the offering table that, uh, what is it, Cain was using. Like, you know, Cain and Abel from the Bible. It's like it appears that the, the place I've been researching up north in Canada is actually the land of Nod, where Cain was banished. And there were some UFO encounters that were going on there. It's like... Yeah, maybe I should show you that. It's like, yeah, no, that's great. I mean, it's like, I a, think, yeah. No, I was just gonna say that, like up north there, it's like it's a horrible environment. No one wants to go there just because there's like so many mosquitoes and stuff. But it's like, man, some of the clues that I've been unraveling there, it's like it's even uh, helped to solve Atlantis and a bunch of other really ancient mysteries and. It's almost a little bit overwhelming to be involved in it. I keep thinking that someone else should be the one in charge. And it's like, how the heck did I get involved in all this? But yeah, so this was yeah. the, the coin that the light beings gave me. And then this, so they, they gave it to you straight straight up wherever you met them and they just handed this to you? Well, that's the weird part. Like the, the light beings, like, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll put the image of them up. It's like... Uh, they're, they have like a humanoid type appearance to them, but their appendages, like hands and stuff, they didn't have normal ones. They had like mittens and it didn't look like they could hold stuff. And then uh, I had a missing time encounter, or like a lapse where I went from like, I think it was about midnight or so and it switched to 10 a.m. in like the blink of an instant. And when I came back to, to check on the ground to see if there was any evidence of what had happened, the coin was sitting right where it happened. So that's basically how I got the coin from them. And it's like, uh, people think it's like uh, common to find coins from Mexico around, but up in Canada, it's like, I've only seen a Mexican currency once, and that was then. It's like, I've never seen another coin from Mexico since. So it's not like it's common to find Mexican coins laying on the ground here. Yeah, and then it, it happened right after this, so obviously yeah. it had something, it was a connection. They, they, I mean, obviously they must have knew that you'd find it too if, you know, they did all that, so. Yeah, no, basically from there, I just followed the, the image that they did that was on that coin it turned out to be the sacred tree and then the sacred tree symbology is like common all over the world so i'm almost thinking we're getting close to the disclosure point where we're we're gonna know who these aliens are and what their agenda is pretty soon like it almost seems like it is the anunnaki gods and they've returned yeah. sort of thing and, and that's why i think they choose a lot of people you know to to have contact with now and especially in the past because when this happens, a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions and they're going to be afraid. I mean, there's going to be a lot of religious kind of pandemonium. They need to, they're going to need to go to their religious texts and they're going to need to, to verify everything. And I think they're setting this up so when, they, when this happens, they, they will be able to verify that they were the ones from the Bible. They were the ones in all the ancient texts. And so, so we, we, everything will come together and, and you know, we, can, we won't have a, you know, a fearful uh, chaos. Yeah. Now, when I was up north, too, I, I checked the, the area, and there happened to be a, an abandoned military base right on the top of a, a dormant super caldera, like a volcano. And then I checked the history of it, and yeah, there was some UFO sightings back in 1953 at this place. So it almost seems like uh, I was wondering why was the Anunnaki at this place where, like, Cain was. And it turns out it's the, the second best gold mine in the entire world. So it's like maybe the Anunnaki and that gold connection that Zachariah Sitchin was talking about really was true. Because it appears that the Anunnaki are hanging out right next to where this big gold mine is. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know the whole thing about gold. I mean, I, I don't, to be honest, I don't see gold as being valuable to me. Yeah. But, no, you know, I think that it can be used in for many things. Even, even it can be used to teach entire planets. I mean, it could be in, in for that or protection. Yeah, Stuff gold like does have a lot of weird properties to it. Like, we always get caught up in using it for money or we use it for electronics. But uh, there's, like, geoengineering principles to it, too. Like, you can take gold dust and put it in the atmosphere and help block particles. Sort of like the, the chemtrail theory or whatever. Yeah, and I've heard that. I mean, they have all these underground bases and pretty much they have they have all kinds of gold stored away underground that they've hidden away. Yeah. And at a certain point they're going to release it or something i read in a book one time it's called gods of eden but they said nice. that they'll be able to release it um and then pretty much bring about you know an abundance you know i, I don't know if it's accurate but i mean i'm i'm, I'm i believe that they would have gold underground yeah. definitely no, I've heard a couple guests talk about the gold theory. There's a Karen Hudes, and she's like a World Bank whistleblower. She was saying the same thing, that there's an organization that's going around hoarding all of the gold, that we've actually mined a, a crap load more gold than there is in circulation. It, it's all being hidden somewhere. Yeah, so, so they have the power because the, the money, the, the cash, it's not worth nothing. It's really the only thing that's that would be worth anything would be the gold. But I don't even think I think that knowledge and wisdom is really in character is worth much more than gold. But yeah, in terms of that, you know, the the financial aspect. Yeah, I just got a one slide here about the truth movement, and I know like I haven't really heard too much about the truth movement. I heard about it before when it came to the nine eleven thing. How uh, they had like a truth movement that was trying to get people to investigate nine eleven. So it's like, is that like the same type of truth movement, or I guess it's a separate one that you're involved with? Or? It's, you know, I mean, the truth is the truth. So, I mean, I think that the truth is involved in everything. And, and, in, and in everything, there's a little bit of maybe lies, maybe a little darkness. And, and But the truth is always the thing that sustains it to, to, to do maximum good. And so when I say I'm a part of the truth movement, it's not like, I don't think it's like an actual official... It, it's just it's it really is more of a spiritual thing that just exists and oh. in, in, in anything that's a pr progression progression of good okay. you know and this, this is an example of it that that somebody would would be curious about 9-11 and then investigate it and and i've seen the videos and in, in the the documentaries on how it, it's very possible it was an orchestrated event yeah and so even even the planes were holograms I heard, but you know I don't know I've I don't know the hundred percent truth about how everything happens, you know. No, it's like I've heard a lot of the theories about that too, and I find it hard to believe the the holographic plane thing. But when it comes to like the bombs that were placed in the trade center to demolish it, I think that's one of the main ones that gets me thinking. Yeah, there there really is something to this, right? Yeah, and I seen the demolition on how it seemed that there was some detonation, and that even the days before they had like bomb dogs go in there and like do something where they were just inspecting. And even uh, I think it was Condoleezza Rice. She she told um, certain people to not fly that day. Like she had some kind of knowledge potentially of what was going to happen. So yeah, it, you know it is what it is. You know. No, hopefully one day we get to the bottom of that mystery because, like, man, 9-11 was a horrible attack and I can't believe how long it's been going on. We still don't really have any concrete answers. Like, the truth is long overdue yeah. for that, that's for sure. I've always kind of wondered if it's possible that, you know, you could have taken, like, it could have been totally a lie. Like, that part of, re like, like this goes really deep, but I'm saying, like, computer simulated realities, you know? Oh, yeah. You basically you basically generate these people and they're, they're not real. They're actually robots and, and or, or they're an image or it's not even a, cause I wasn't there. And so my con like the only consciousness I can truly verify is my own. I can't, there's no way for me to know that you're not a robot. Yeah. I mean, I, I see that you're, I, even if you were a robot, I would love you anyways. You know what I'm saying? So, there's really no way for me. I can only see my own. So everything in this reality is questionable yeah. and, it, and it's, it's really, anything's possible for what it could be you know it could they could have been isolated the entire like the pixels of the area of area of uh, ground zero and in 9-11 they could have they could have teleported it to a different reality i mean you don't know like anything really is possible and even if I'm, I'm a low intelligent being that can think of these things imagine uh, beings that are millions of years old yeah so it, it could have been orchestrated and i feel like everything's orchestrated anyways now, people make fun of that holographic universe theory, but it's like, man, some of the biggest universities in the in the country are, are talking about it. Like, I think even Boston was one of the ones where they managed to look at the way the, the universe is, like, 
I think they said the way it's coded is almost similar to the way computer software works. And yeah. It's like uh, I've and got a friend, Jim Elvidge, on Facebook there. He wrote a book called The Universe Solved, and it's just loaded with like scientific data that shows that there's so many ways that our planet is similar to a computer simulation that the odds of us not being in the simulation is almost way less than the odds of us being in it. So. Right, but I mean, if if you really enjoy the simulation to the point where you believe that this is the only reality and this this is what this is what life is, yeah. Then it, what what sets it apart from a computer? What is, does it even matter? That's the thing, and I think that that may be the lesson for why we're here, why I'm here, and why we're all here is it, it can be controlled, and that's and that's even what Jesus would teach to the apostles. He said, "Look, you have faith; you can walk on water." You could do all these things. You can move mountains. You could throw it into the sea. You could do whatever you want as long as you understand and have faith. And and they, none of them could. You, they couldn't. They wouldn't pick up the mountains. And, and no pastor today definitely picks up mountains. Yeah. So I say, what, what's the what's the teaching? What's the question of that? I, I feel well. Maybe it's because the question is why would you want to move a mountain? And then go from there. And then we're kind of at this point where maybe we need we want to do way more than move a mountain. Yeah. No, I'm glad you brought Jesus up. Like, a lot of people don't want to talk about him, but it's like I even talk to Christians about, like, what is Jesus' greatest miracle that he ever accomplished? And it's like, just before he got taken into custody to be, like, uh, crucified, it's like he transformed into a light being, and they called it the transfiguration, and I was like, how come people aren't talking about that miracle? It's like, you, you tell it to a Christian, they're like, what, light being? It's like, no, and he Jesus brought, never yeah, did and that. Elijah and Moses. <laughs> See, they were there with them. They, yeah. they were dead. So they, they were already they were still alive, or it was a hologram, or they resurrected them, whatever it was. Yeah. This has been around. This technology that we're talking about is not something that's new. Yeah. Well, I guess I should bring up another one of your slides here is uh, the Washington, D.C. UFO stuff. It's like maybe you wanted to tell the, the viewers about what this picture here means. So this is, yeah, this is a major sighting that I, apparently happened on this day, and, you know, they have it on video. You could look it up, and I mean, I'm still doing research on the on the whole thing. I don't I don't have all the, the the small details about the event, but there's many UFO videos. This is just one UFO sighting, but this was a ma kind of like a special one where it was near the White House and everything. So, you know, I kind of I like that one, but yeah, that's one of my favorite ones too because it's like the press covered it and everything, and I'm pretty sure those UFOs stayed above the White House for a long time. It wasn't like it was just a few seconds and then they left. So it's like, it's pretty much people make fun of you and like saying, hey, UFOs aren't real. Why don't they land on the White House lawn? It's like, well, look at this picture. It's like, actually, they have been to the White House lawn, right? So, yeah, I guess because I mean, yeah, I mean, I think people knew about it. But it, the question is, what are they going to do about it? They don't yeah. know what the aliens are. They don't know. It could, it could be government. It could be they don't know. So it just gets swept under the rug. Yeah, they, they move on. And I mean, this was this was 70 years ago here. And, you know, they still uh obviously have issues trying to understand it yeah now i guess i'll move on to the next slide here uh, i think uh, one of the researchers in this one who was it oh yeah david wilcock it's like he had some great google videos going back like i don't know 10 years ago or so so i've really liked his work yeah yeah i've, I've been i've been following him for about maybe 2011 yeah you know and um he, he, you know, he said that there was a major shift going to happen on 2012, 2012, and you know, and so I mean, I feel like ever since that 2012 date, there's been, it's it's been a speeding process. It's, it's sped up, you know, people the for me and for a lot of people the disclosure of, you know, they, they're kind of like, well, why didn't the world end? And yeah. so then after that, it's like, well, then they try to figure out, well, why is it still here? And so then they kind of just, it's been. It's just been a slow process, though. I, I want it to speed up more, you know? Yeah. No, I think uh, with 2012, there was a whole bunch of really big stuff that happened that no one really clued into. Like, there was a major solar flare that was, like, going to destroy almost all the electronic grids on the planet. And it just missed the Earth by, like, a, I don't know, like cosmological terms, but they called it a close call sort of thing. So, it's like some big stuff did happen on 21st, 2012. 
And yeah. So, and that was also the day that I started watching this show called America on Earth that talked about ancient mysteries up north in Canada. And that aired on December 21st, 2012. And after watching that show, that was when I had my big like epiphany or moment or whatever you want to call it. And I said to hell with my regular job and went up north and started looking. So I think maybe people on a personal level had some sort of things happened on 2012. Yeah, I certainly... I certainly remember the day and I, and I, um, you know, I, ever since then, I really, I've, gi I've given up, you know, the ways of the world. I, I always try to seek after something higher and I, and I hated, I've always hated money because not because I hate the things you can get with money, but because it's, it, we don't need it. You know, there's that we can have all of the things without the money. It's just the fact is that people always, seem to you know because their belief is in money that's why we haven't um, been able to move forward but you know even i've been i was religious i've always studied re uh, revelation yeah always you, you you talked about the image of the beast i mean this is something i don't know if you've studied but oh yeah it, it talks about the mark of the beast and you know how it's how it's an image and how it's it's it's, it's a mystery and you have to really get into it but it ultimately it gets down to money and what i've seen and it gets down to just a false a primitive belief in, in the way that it works so you know I've I've just kind of been pushed to to move forward and I just want people to realize and I think that most people don't want money there's no reason to have money yeah no like when you look at the olden days like it, it managed to function just fine with barter and trade a long time before money came around yeah but even that was more of a that's still a primitive way I feel because okay. I mean they didn't have the high level technology I mean I feel like it's it's definitely it's probably a healthier way, but still, it's like I feel like there still needs to be some kind of maybe a competition type motivational way um, to live, you know. And it's hard to explain because I don't really know how the process is going to fully unfold in the future. But I know that it's just you know we don't we can we can have everything based on our our character and and what we what we present to the world and. You know, maybe we make music and then people like us for that instead of liking us because we make money. Yeah. You know, so it's just an example. Now, I don't know what's going on with Skype here. It seems like I uh, lost your video signal, but I'm still getting audio. So maybe did you want to give me a call back so we can get your, your video going again? Or? Sure. Oh, wait, never mind. You just came back as soon as I mentioned that. <laughs> oh, am I back? Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's yeah. good. Yeah, maybe the, someone was listening. <laughs> well, I, actually, I have my thing plugged in here to like an extension, a USB extension. It could just be a weak signal. Oh, okay, cool. But um, yeah, and so that's the you know that's the main thing is that there's a lot of people that can't even present this information. Like a lot of people, they just can't. And so I've been prepared to do what I do. I haven't had really intense experiences like you have. I've had some experiences, but things that I don't really, I can't really fully explain and. Yeah, you know, a lot of people I think even have had these experiences, but they brush them away because they're afraid that if they say anything, then people will call them crazy. So I just want to be a display, and I think the more we do this, more people will come forward. Especially people that have insider information, whistleblowers. Yeah. They're gonna feel comfortable coming out because they know that they have protection. I mean, they're gonna as, as soon as they make a video, it's gonna have so many views that that they can't kill them. But but in the past, if they made a video, you know, maybe thirty years ago, and it only got a couple views, yeah. they'll kill them, and then nobody will be able to, nobody will remember because you know they'll be able to do it easier potentially. Yeah, no, it's a it's a definitely a, a strange situation. It's like no, even with my encounter too, it's like everyone's talking about how they want to have their own personal UFO encounters and stuff, and. My research led me to this place. It's called, uh, I don't know if you've, you've probably never heard of it. It's a Manitoulin Island. No. It's uh, basically an island that we have here in the, the Great Lakes area in Canada. And it's like this sacred mystery island that it's like it used to have all these legends about it. And one of the legends happened to be that there's a, a giant rock on the island called Legendary Dreamers Rock. And there was a First Nations prophet guy. I guess uh, maybe 500 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. And he had a, a UFO encounter on this Dreamer's Rock. So it's like, I don't know if this is what the, the situation's coming to now. It's like why these light beings told me to go to this island and find about this Dreamer's Rock and 
find this location that you can apparently see UFOs and communicate directly with the, the creator. But I've got a, a contact named Kevin Najwan, and uh, he's a, an Ojibwe guy. And he's going to help me get to the Dreamer's Rock this year. So I'm going to do my best to see if I can have a, another UFO encounter. I'm actually kind of hoping it doesn't work out and that I can just go on with my life sort of thing. But I'm going to give it my best. And maybe that's what's coming. Is like a lot of people are going to be going to this Dreamer's Rock. And it's, it's like the legend says, it, it's going to help mankind when we need it the most. And it seems like this is the time where people really need it, right? Yeah, I mean... Whatever comes to you, maybe you could live feed it, you know, maybe you could video it. <laughs> no, I wish. The the First Nations people actually have some strict laws about the this Dreamer's Rock. They've been guarding it ever since, and they even have a no photo policy, so you're not allowed to yeah. take pictures there or anything. But if you go yeah. onto YouTube, there's some people that broke the rules and did film there, and there was a, a TV show made back in the 70s about mining crews that were going to come and destroy the rock, and the First Nations people had to battle them in order to, to stop them from destroying it, so it's some pretty wild history, and I really don't yeah, understand it. But travel. I'd love to go there myself. Where is it exactly? You have to send it to me, send me the link, and yeah. I'll... Um, if you okay. go on, uh, you know the Great Lakes, I'm sure you've seen those on the map lots, right? Yes. It's a... Uh, it's, in, it's in one of the Great Lakes, and it happens to be the world's largest island that's in fresh water. And it also has the world's diverse or most diverse animal population. So there's a whole bunch of reasons why the, the First Nations people think of it as a special place. So, yeah, if you ever go there, I highly recommend it. Just try to avoid the bug season because you'll get eaten alive if you go when there's the mosquitoes and black flies. But, yeah. No, but I guess yeah. I'll, I'll get back onto your slides a bit so we have time to cover them. Uh, what was this one here? So, yeah, I mean, I seen that one real quick and I just pulled it up. And uh, also it's, you know, what it represents for me is I feel that right now on this planet, there's a lot of imbalance between the, uh, the, the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine or just, you know, men and women alone. Oh, yeah. If you go into Facebook, there's no end of battles between feminists and I guess what is the male equivalent or whatever. Yeah, right. And, and so I feel like, you know, a lot of the, the imbalance was for a reason so we so we could appreciate the balance you yeah. know and so it took a lot of the imbalance to, to get to where we're at and so now i feel we're, we're moving into the balancing of it and i feel that artificial intelligence can help with this because you know we can uh, we can base it more on the consciousness between men and women instead of just the flesh yeah, yeah so so what i'm really an advocate for is, is for the artificial intelligence sex robots because you know, I mean, it's no, it's no question that people, people like sex. You know, that's that's just one of the facts of reality. So I don't think we should shy away from it. Yeah. And so for an for an eternity, to have these sex robots that can perform, you know, amazingly higher than we can even imagine, it's not. It, it would it would help. It would balance the the minds between men and women because it wouldn't be based on what you look like. It wouldn't be based on how much money you have. It, whatever like this it would be based on your purely your consciousness and and so um and then you could still have all of the different women that you want or the different men it, you know you could pr pretty much log in say i want this guy for this day or this girl for this day or 10 of them or whatever and, and i have this and i can enter into a, a, a simulated reality with mansions and and so everything's just kind of playing off of what we already know except catapulting it to, yeah. to, to a new dimension or to a new way you know, of, of kind of seeing it and just kind of fulfilling all the fantasies that we've been we've been fed. They've fed us these fantasies. You know, I didn't I didn't create them. Yeah. No, so, I like this. I really like this picture too. It seems like they almost put like the bird up in the top symbol to almost uh, imitate the wing disc that we see in the Anunnaki pictures. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's all kinds of uh, you know nice art there and kind of have you know symbols on the whole thing. So yeah, I just I feel like I pulled that up real quick. Just. So that's kind of just what it is. I mean, there's probably much more to say about it, but... Yeah, I guess we'll go on to the next one then. Uh, we got this one here. This would be like the, the third eye symbolism, is it? Or... Yeah, just kind of a yeah, awakening your, your personal consciousness, the way you see things, you know, and to awaken to the, to the possibilities of, of infinity and to not find them to be scary. And I think that a lot of times that does take inner work because it just doesn't matter. I mean... When I was 18, I mean, yeah, I was just a different person. You know, not that I was totally different, but for many people there, to tell them this, it's like, 
it's hard. It's hard for me to understand someone else, really, anybody else, fully. You know, like, for example, you had the experience with the light beings. I've never had that type of experience. Why? Well, I, I question myself, why? But, but then when I look at you and you explain it to me, that explanation to me, I'm having a vision in my mind or, or an image. I'm having a, a, that experience. That's how they wanted me to have that experience by you explaining it to me. So that's why they, they gave it to you. Yeah. And so that's, for, for, the, for, the, for that picture, it's more of just like opening up your, your own personal consciousness to, to connect to the most high the, or the divine or the, the creator. But also realize that there is people, you know, there's aliens, there's extraterrestrials, there's light beings, there's everybody's involved in this it's not just you know one being or something like that yeah i was gonna say too it's like uh you've talked to a bunch of different people about ufo encounters and aliens and stuff has anyone told you about mostly like gray aliens or has anyone mentioned light beings or um i, I haven't really heard too many stories about light beings yeah. um i've heard a few you know um I, i'm not 100 percent because like i said i've never had it on my own um, is it freezing up for you or? Yeah, looks like the Skype every once in a while seems to freeze, but yeah, it usually it corrects itself after a few seconds. But if it if the video doesn't pick up again, I don't know if it's your cord or we could try calling back again. Yeah, I could try to. Well, I just don't have too many USBs, so I might have a week. I, I think it's Skype. They 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 do this a lot, but um. No, anyway. one of the one of the first shows I did. Oh, there you're back. It's like we did some uh. A show on what is it mind control experiments being done in montreal at some of the insane asylums and holy crap did skype ever act up for that show it's like every every five minutes it seemed like i had to call the guests back and then i went and did like another five six shows with not a single issue so i don't know it's yeah. almost like the subject matter can sometimes trigger a little bit of a <laughs> some sort of got, funny stuff yeah some kind of astral uh, energetic kind of uh movement you know i don't know what, yeah. whatever whatever because, yeah, I mean, it's there's definitely an imagina imagination there with, with, you know, the astral plane. I feel like it's all connected. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's very possible that this technology really is just a part of us as well somehow. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I was going to say, it's like I almost wonder sometimes, like, if the, the world really is like a matrix or whatever and or a computer simulation is there agents in this matrix that are helping to keep everything on track and maybe they're really like santa claus is always watching you it's like maybe these aliens can see us at all times and are like omnipotent build beings that are making sure that the universe doesn't go too far off track sort of thing right yeah and if the agents ever were pro they could just be programmed to do this type of work i mean they could literally be just literal data packets that just do this it's not even like, they're not even like a consciousness like me. Yeah, it's actually, like YouTube's right. not actually watching every video looking for copyright strikes. They just got algorithms that do it for them, right? Right, similar to that. Where <laughs> it's, yeah, it's data that does, you know, coding and stuff like that. So Yeah, it but, could uh, be that. Yeah, yeah. This, this slide's kind of cool. You got the, what is this, like a heart ascension over the earth type of image? Or? Yeah, I, I seen it as kind of like the whole planet kind of accessing that higher even the third eye of the planet itself oh, but cool. you know yeah i mean just it, it's strange you know a lot of people talk about parallel realities and how if i choose to think about something in this moment that i'll, I'll spiral into a different reality and you know I, I don't know how that works i mean it could be a lie that people get left behind but that's why i feel like it's just important for everybody to focus on their own personal work and do the best they can to, yeah. to spread this. Because I feel like even by spreading this information and me like coming on something like this or me just posting every day or making videos or telling people in, in public or whatever, I'm I'm getting a personal growth out of it for myself. I'm learning how to socialize with people even, even in the face of persecution or kind of, you know, going outside the box and feeling that, that discomfort zone possibly that people never, that people always seem to a lot of times shy away from. Yeah, and, um, yeah. You know, I mean, ignorance but, is bliss, they say, right? If you try to stay away from stress, you're going to be uh, happier. Right. But, but you got to right. push yourself at the same time, too, right? So <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a balance, I guess. Right. And and so another example of this is like Jim Carrey. He's, I don't know if you've seen some of his videos, but he seems to have uh, recently kind of come out into <laughs> in this kind of philosophy of consciousness. And he could easily be a robot. 
himself. Like he could have been programmed in my reality to do this type of job, or he could be a, he could be an Elohim and an extraterrestrial or an Anunnaki or yeah. just an image. Or he could, he could be he could be a data packet. So you know, I mean, we don't really know how how anybody else gets to where they're at. We can only focus on where we're going, and I hope to go somewhere better. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really love Jim Carrey's movies, like Dumb and Dumber, and like some of his other ones. It's like it's a real great straight stress relief to see something so funny like that. But you now he's been a wild character for quite a while now. It's like at award shows, he used to always make some really off the wall topics and or comments that would normally get other people in trouble. But I guess he's allowed to get away with it because he's like so popular, sort of thing, right? And I and yeah, and I feel like humor. If if there's an ultimate weapon in the universe. It would be humor. There's yeah. nothing more powerful than humor, because if you can get somebody to laugh, then you can. The autumn. I mean, really, just become friends, and that's really what the ultimate goal is. Really, yeah. I've, it's it's very powerful weapon, and I think that this whole thing that we're in right now, really, there is there is an ultimate joke here, and it's just about getting it, and it's about it's about enjoying the process. It's about you know for for eternity even. What's humor? What's humor for eternity after after there is a full disclosure and, and even even telepathy? What is telepathy? Yeah. Because I, I hear a lot of people say that they meet with aliens or they see aliens and it's a, it's a telepathic, especially with the greys or with some you know usually most of the races that they it say or like Corey Good I don't know if you're Corey Good he says that they interface with you. Hmm. What is I because I don't personally know what it is myself. And the only way I can see it is, is from all these other people's perspectives, and then it comes to me, and so I'm learning what that even means. Yeah. You know? No, I didn't have the greatest luck communicating with the light beings when I had my encounter with them. It was like a, they came really close to my face, like almost like an inch away, so that I could see almost like right into them. But they never said a word, and they never physically gave me anything, but... The only way I could say maybe they communicated with me is that my dreams seem to change drastically. So, like, I have a history of my grandma is actually a dream psychic from a Ukraine. So it's sort of like a gift that I inherited where I can dream the future up to about a day or two in advance. And it's not always the exact future, but it's like little pieces that I can put together to have a great idea of what's going to happen throughout the day. So maybe dreams are like the, the computers or like... In computers, we got like Google and Chrome and all that, but I think with humans, where the computer software that we're going to use to communicate is probably going to be dreams. Yeah, I've I've had some strange dreams myself. Dreams that I don't even really make sense, or or that make me feel even bad. But but you have to. What I've learned is is that I analyze the dream, and and maybe sometimes the bad feelings I get from the dream are good for me because the next day I'm going to be like trying to find a way to be happy because I just had such a weird, stupid, bad dream. And then, you know, I'm going to do something different that next day. So, I mean, yeah, I agree that it's it's very possible that just our consciousness itself is, it, it, for eternity, it's already been programmed. Yeah. That, that the entire simi the entire thing is, is all a program. And it's crazy. I mean, to live for a trillion years, I mean, I can't even imagine what that's like. H how does it even continue to be fun? How you know how you get to a point where you're just like you know what I'm just I, I want to end it, no. and that's not good if anybody gets to that point because if anybody really got to that point, the limitless possibilities for the evil they could do, you know. So it's like we have to. There has to be something that that can keep them enjoying it to to keep them from becoming like a, like a psychopathic you know child rapist or something like that. It's something really sick because they're just so bored with eternity. Now, that's uh, what I came across when I was uh, researching the ancient sites, or not sites, but a text from the Sumerians. They talked about how like there's a, a tablet called the Sumerian King List, and then it lists how some of the leaders that were in charge of like a kingdom led for over 40,000 years in like succession. It's like, how is that even possible? And then you look at the, the last guy on this King List turned out to be Gilgamesh, and I don't know if you've ever heard of the Epic of Gilgamesh before, or... Yeah, the, the ancient Greek. Um, yeah, well, he, he was the Sumerian giant guy who uh, he was on a quest to, to find immortality. And mm -hmm. uh, basically how the legend went was that uh, he discovered this plant or he managed to find it that would give him immortality. 
But uh, on the journey, his best friend, Enkidu, which actually was a Bigfoot, if people want to really read the book, it's pretty fascinating. But anyways, his friend got killed along the way. And then he's like, do I really want to eat this plant of immortality? Or, or would I rather see my best friend again and actually live my life and die as a regular person? Mm -hmm. So then uh, after Gilgamesh became king, you start to see all the king's lists, like the, the, how long they ruled for, started going down and down and down until it reached the point where it was like normal lifespans. And then there's this saying that the gods, like the ancient Anunnaki, they did live forever. And when they seen that humanity died, they were so envious of us because they lived so long. And like you said, it's like if you live too long, stuff becomes boring. It's like you can't cope with it anymore. So they actually love the idea of being able to die and be, become mortal. So it almost makes you wonder if that's what happened to the Anunnaki gods when they left. Maybe they decided to become mortal because they envied it so much. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, I feel like that you should always have the option to end it for yourself. I think, I mean, that's just a healthy thing if if that's what you want to do, really. And But there should be a process to make sure that, you know, you're, you're making the right choice for yourself. And on, on this planet, though, I mean, I don't think there's really an excuse to end it because we've only been here for, you know, a very few amount of years. Yeah. So. No, I actually lost my best friend to suicide, so it's like it's a, definitely a touchy subject for me to talk about it. But no, I, I think people really should try to fight through things and just not put this distress on other people about how they could have helped you and, and sort of thing. Because, man, it can destroy people's lives when you do that, right? Yeah, yeah it's it's hard, and I've never really dealt with. I mean, I've there's been people that have died in my life that have done like overdosing from drugs or yeah, fentanyl and. Uh, what is it, all the other drugs that are going around these days? I'm starting to lose track of how many friends that I've lost to it, man. Yeah, so it's 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 difficult, and I, I have a belief that there's a reason for it, and I feel like I'll see them again. Yeah. So. No, I mean, that's how I try to look at it, too. It's like I still see my best friend in dreams every now and then. He seems like he's doing okay. I don't know if it's really him or not, but I'm keeping optimistic that I'll see him again one day. Yeah, I guess... Mm -hmm. um, We've been talking over an hour now, and I did get a little video clip ready about your presidential run thing, so maybe I'll just play that clip, and we'll come back after that and take a little break. Yeah. And I guess uh, for the viewers who are wondering what we're going to talk about, we got some more slides coming, and uh, I guess we'll we'll talk more about UFOs and uh, maybe some other subjects too if we got time. So, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll run the, the video now, and I think it was about maybe a minute or two long. And just to let you know, Derek, that it actually keeps recording your sound. So if you're talking in the background to people, we'll hear you while the video is playing. Just to warn you, right? Okay, so just watch the video and then we'll come back or take a break? Yeah, we'll watch the video and I'll take a break while it's playing, grab a drink. And then, uh, yeah, it's. let's see if I can find out how long it is. Yeah, it's about two minutes or so. So, yeah, if the okay. viewers want to just stick with us and uh, watch the video too, we'll, we'll be right back to discuss it when it's done. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll see you shortly. All right, stay tuned, everyone. It's time to rise together in truth worldwide. During this campaign and presidential run, we must all bend together as one voice and publicly shame all those who speak against the truth. We must come together, meeting in public, creating billboards and pickets as one voice and one vote. We will rid the entire governmental system of the corruption and the pus that has oozed for far too long from the sexually transmitted fatal disease of banking worship. We will storm the ballots and internet forums, shaming all those who come against our truth movement. Anyone who is against ridding the world of the banking system must be left alone and shamed if they ever speak in favor of it during this purge. As we rise together, we will take action, and those against the truth will be left to watch and follow our movement as weak goats. We will take over the government legally and responsibly, utilizing all legalities. We will feed this cunt a double portion of the dish she made for herself while ignoring all those starving in the cold. We will make her drink tenfold from the same cup she squeezed the blood of the martyrs into for her own feasts as we pry all those who worship the banking system from government positions and even our own kitchen tables. We will use truth, logic, and power to finally have a new way. Join us! 
Your vote is more than just casting a ballot. Your vote is a way of life. The time of grace has ended for this corruption. Truth rising. All right, so we're back. Okay, yeah, I really, I really like your voice there, how you're able to portray what you're trying to say so dramatically. It's like, if you ever get into voiceover work, let me know, and maybe I'll get you to do some for my videos. Yeah, I kind of just wanted to stress it. Um, I couldn't hear it on my end. I, don't, I wasn't supposed to hear it, right? Um, I guess it doesn't play to the guest. I wasn't even sure about that. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's fine. I was just wondering. But yeah, I tried to just kind of give it like, a, you know, kind of a... I'm serious about this, you know? Yeah. That's no. what I could, but... No, videos, it's like sometimes if you're too, like, mellow and stuff, people aren't going to listen. So I'm glad that you're making it more dramatic and getting people's attention. Hopefully that it works for you and you're able to get some good exposure out of it, right? Yeah, it's just what it's about, you know, just kind of showing people that, you know, we are serious. I mean, this is a very serious thing, but also at the same time, it's you can be humorous. I mean, it is a bit of... It is about love and peace and happiness, but I think a lot of times people will look at people who are about love, peace, and happiness and, and take advantage of them, call them weak, call them all these things. But even even Jesus said that, um, you know, he said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. But he's he's the prince of peace, we yeah. call him. You know, and but even religion and stuff like that in the Bible has been, has been, um, has been manipulated and, and used to no. encourage so prim primitive ways, so... No, I was lucky that I got to talk to a, a few people that follow Islam, and uh, they were saying that the Quran was having a bunch of issues like that too. Like there's sects of Islam that believe the Quran was manipulated and changed right from the day it was written. So it's hard to say if we're going to go by what a book says because people were involved with it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. I mean, you know, Muhammad was over there, and there was a lot of stuff going on, and I don't really fully know everything about that, but I feel like I feel like Muhammad was somebody that was you know influenced by probably extraterrestrials to to be a um a leader during that time to catapult to influence evolution and i think that extraterrestrials have done this where or you could say god has done this where he sent prophets he sent special people to do special things yeah uh, and and you know what i mean to, to be able to facilitate the whole evolution of mankind and you know yeah, so it was just a message for a sp specific time period, just like Joseph Smith, a specific message, Jesus' specific message. and Because, for example, if Jesus came down, he started talking about artificial intelligence, alien spaceships, they don't even understand in their language. They don't even have anything to compare it to. P airplanes, nothing. They don't even, I mean, at that point, they didn't even think the, wor the world was round. So... He yeah. had to. He had to be that representation in a way where it's like he, he's kneeling down to humanity, and he's saying, you know, um, he's explaining it to them like they're a little baby in their own baby language, like they don't even speak actual English or anything that we speak now. Yeah. No, I'm glad that you brought up the the Earth being round and being flat, and it's isn't it? There's like this debate going on now in the the truther community whether or not there's a flat Earth. It's like, have you looked into the flat Earth theory at all, and what do you make of that? You know, I think I think it's really people. I think it started it started as like a mockery, yeah, to our to our scientists and our leaders, because you know, I mean, none of us have been in space for the majority, yeah. And the fact that you know, basically, we're just saying we don't trust you. That's what people are saying that they just don't trust what we're being told, and you know, they're going so far to say that the world is 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 it's not flat. I mean, it's not round. Yeah, but um. I mean, I personally, I believe that it's round, but at the same time, it's very possible that the whole thing, we don't really understand the, the whole way of it, you know, uh, like we were talking about the holographic type realities and stuff like that, yeah. or I've even heard theories where I've heard people who have had contacts with the uh, extraterrestrials, they say they can, they can teleport now without even having to, to use machines. I mean, they literally use their mind, just like the light beings you're talking about, right? Yeah. They use their mind, they're there. And so if that's possible, then you're talking about the entire spectrum of reality and science itself where we just can't understand it yet. So, yeah, you know, the flat earth thing is, is uh, just a part of the whole process, I think. No, I think, yeah, you're right about that. It's like uh, NASA for a long time now, like since like 50 years ago, is they're not really giving people straight answers. Like uh, what is it Jason Martell likes to call NASA never a straight answer as the acronym for them. So 
It's like I almost wonder if the flat earth movement and all that stuff came out right at the perfect time to sort of like silence people that were criticizing NASA. It's like, oh, you can't criticize NASA anymore. Or people are going to call you a flat earther. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think that NASA really is just an organization that's not even the real organization that's really involved with any of the high level stuff. It's it's more of like just like if you want to call your government, you know, city hall or something like that, and you have people that are just working there that, you know, they don't really know what's going on. They're just secretaries. That's really what I feel that NASA is. Even the whole thing is probably just secretaries. And no. so that's why I don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Not really. No, it's weird how we haven't had any people in orbit and, or beyond Earth orbit in so long, and it's like, it's been 50 years. It's like, why are we still just getting probe data back, right? Like, So, yeah, so what they tell us, right? So, but I know that they've, they've I mean, they have secret space programs. I mean, I really believe that it's going on, and even even if the humans aren't doing it, I know extraterrestrials are already there. So, yeah. so it's something, and that's the thing, I feel like extraterrestrials are a part of humanity. Yeah. It's not that they're different, and that's that's the thing that they're actually just like animals that live here or whatever. I mean, it's we're all the same. We're all, we should always treat each other with respect. And yeah, no, I was lucky enough that I got uh, Billy Carson on the show. Actually, he was my last guest before I went on uh, holidays there, and he talked about all these different things that are going on on Mars where. People are finding artifacts that look like entire cities are still on Mars, and there could be domes on the moon. And it's like we covered how Buzz Aldrin was talking about a, a giant pyramid on the dark side of the moon that he saw. So there's definitely some weird stuff going on with that. And I wonder if the flat Earth isn't really a cover for maybe the holographic universe theory that we've been talking about. It's like people get all caught up in the shape of the Earth, and they're not even going to bother looking into the fact that it's a simulation. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And so even even that, even even like the the information that's being leaked about like the moon and Mars, I feel like that is an information of of a message being sent to us to teach us to help us from the higher. Even you could call it your higher self, right? That's just the the source of the universe, right? Yeah. Where even if we see the information, we feel like we're being betrayed or we're being lied to or confused. That's still a source of information. That's some. That's that's a data of information. Yeah. And then we, we analyze it in that way where we're saying that, oh, we're being deceived. We're, we're you know, something's lying to us. But that's going to catapult us maybe maybe even five years or five months down the line to find something new. So they, they can really influence us that this way. And I feel like that's a part of telepathy to influence us to to um, to just be able to. They can give us something. Even even I've gone so far as to believe in um, pre-life planning. Even that before we come here, it's already set up for even specific events, even people we meet, every single detail. And this could easily be programmed in a, in a computer simulation, right? We just thrown into it. They already can calculate our moves because we know, they know that if they make this happen in our reality or if, if, it's, if, it's, if it's coded that way, we're going to, based on our DNA and how we're created, we're going to react in that way. Yeah. Our consciousness is just going to react, but but we've always been taught that we've been loved. All the religions have taught us that God loves us, right? Yeah, I think that we should be lucky that it is that there is hope. <laughs> yeah. It's very possible that there didn't have to be hope. <laughs> like we really could have just been programmed to to either die, be a slave, or even have the next life wherever we go be worse. Yeah. You know? Now, I look at the universe simulation, too, as, like, why would the creator make it so difficult? And then I think about video games, and I'm like, man, every time I play a video game, what do I do? But I take the difficulty setting, and I crank it up as high as it can go sort of thing, right? So maybe that's more evidence that we are in a simulation just because of how difficult things really are. Right, like, if you take the game shark out of the cheat codes and you just you put them all in in the beginning, you're going to get bored of the game yeah. pretty quick. You know, you're going to just blow by it. It's not even going to mean really anything to you. And so, I mean, I feel like that that's where we're at now is, is that we've lived this life and, and it's, we, we've had it on difficulty settings, yeah. the highest. And we haven't had the cheat codes. Yeah. But now it's like, you know, we, we, I think that we should be given the cheat codes. And then yeah. once <laughs> we're given the cheat codes, now we can move on to another game. Yeah. And then yeah. still have this game as, you know, almost like we've we've defeated it. And now, or we've overcome, and now we have, like, the cheat codes, and we can enjoy this. Yeah. We can enjoy all, all the things that we didn't get at first because it was so hard, and e even we were lied to, we could, we could say. 
But we really, I think we can come to the conclusion that the lie we were told was, was to actually allow us to enjoy life forever. Yeah. yeah. So that would be a part of us not having animosity towards extraterrestrials or hatred, you know? Yeah. yeah. To forgive even our brothers that, that have done us wrong. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm just getting a little bit of an echo. I don't know if that's from your end or. It could be. There's um, is is it like a real bad echo? Uh, I could just hear myself on. a couple times there, but it seems like it's died down now. All right. Um. Yeah. It's neat that you got this uh, sacred geometry symbol here, and it's like it almost reminds me of the universe simulation too. How it's like these patterns are built into to sacred geometry, right? Yeah. Yeah. I seen it, and I just I feel like almost like it's just like it's a perfect you know, maze almost of like perfection. Like it's very detailed. There's a lot to it, but it's still, it's orchestrated perfectly. Yeah. It's hard to imagine that something so complex could have happened by accident sort of thing. Right. right. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I mean, I see it as art as well, just creativity and, and really just love kind of put into it. Yeah. You know? So what is with this one here? It's almost like a, well, I guess that's the same star within light and stuff. Yeah, that that kind of to me represents kind of like a blossom, bl maybe a blossoming. Oh, like, okay, yeah. You know, you're you're, a, fl you're a, you know, a bud, a flower bud, and then all of a sudden now you blossom brightly into just this bright being, or you know, the whole planet itself kind of bl blossoms like this. Yeah, like a transformation, sort of the caterpillar turns like a, into yeah, a like butterfly. a supernova, or the, or the Big Bang, you know. Yeah. Whoops, skipped one there. Oh, here's a pretty cool image. I guess this is uh, the Horseman of the Apocalypse writing, or what would this one be? Right, I mean, you know, I see it as a kind of, they're all faceless, so you don't, there's no face details of who they are. It's kind of just, it's light, but at the same time, the way we look at light, it's like we, 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 um, we attribute it to humans and ourselves because we're all human. So it's like, I feel like that it's like, it's just a representation of where we're at now, where we're feeling like we're we're fearless. We're, we we understand things, and we, we can we can really enjoy life as just a beings that that can, you know. I don't want to say the word conquer, but just overcome things that any anything that would come in our way, you know. Yeah. No, it's kind of neat too how that uh, picture has the uh, the faceless symbol to it because that's what the light beings look like to me. Also, is they never had specific faces. Like you couldn't tell one face from another. It was just light, sort of thing. Right? Just, just yeah, one truth and one one uh, unification. You know, and they're all living one one greatness, one bright bright greatness. No, I was glad that you got some of these slides in here too, as uh, the Anunnaki symbolism. I guess this one might be a, an Assyrian tablet or maybe a Babylonian tablet of some type, but it's got the wing disc symbol at the top. It's basically the same wing disc that the, the Magi symbol from my show talks about all the time. And then yeah, it, I can't see it yet because it didn't come up on my... Okay, there it is. All right. Yeah. Um, and it's got the, the sacred tree underneath, and then that sacred tree is the one that was on the coin that the light beings gave to me. So every time I see that sacred tree, that always sort of gets my attention. Yeah, I mean, t for me, it's just, it, I feel like it's just it's kind of a symbol that even, even thousands of years ago, they already, f they already knew what was going on. It's like, this isn't something where we've been alone, and it's really orchestrated, and it just gives me the feeling that even my own life has been predestined, and it was already thought about, like, what they were doing right here, they thought about us you know, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000 years later, like, they, they, this is what I'm going to do now, and then 10,000 years, they're even going to look at it right in the moment. Yeah. No, it's wild, some of the symbolism that you see in here, too. It's like some of these guys have wings on the back. I don't know if the viewers can make that out. That They carry around yeah. that magic bag, and they also have a pine cone that they use a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. You know, they they seem to be quite the little explorers, and no, it's, I mean, you know. people are always wondering online about what these symbols mean, and it's like, I guess I'm kind of lucky because I'm a part of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church, and I mentioned how they talk about, uh, well, their, their artwork depicts UFOs. Well, also during an Orthodox Mass, the priest will go around with one of these bags, and he'll dip a pine cone into it and use it to spray holy water onto the congregation. So it's like this tradition of the pine cones and the magic bags and all this, it's really been passed down all the way from the Anunnaki, and it's still being used in the church today. But 
just the Orthodox Church, I guess, and a lot of people have forgotten that it even connects all the way that far back. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that they're, they're stuck even in that, uh, like, they, they see all the symbolism, and maybe they even understand some of it, but I think that they're still primitive in the ways where they fully understand it, so they're kind of reenacting these rituals yeah. that really they really don't do anything. It's just that they're doing it because they feel like that something in the future is going to redeem them from this insanity. Yeah. So they're they're trying to do it. But I mean it does I think it does mean something and to me I feel like it means that just that we're all here, we were all born and especially for me, just my own reality that I was born here and I'm just I'm 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 a young little I'm not even a tadpole yet in this universe, right? I'm just this little thing that's going to be I'm I was birthed into life itself into the universe. Yeah. And this whole process is like, you know, kind of like uh you're being initiated into a higher a higher consciousness, a higher reality, like you're being initiated into something great and you had to experience the the low levels first to to really be equipped with all these things, the, the maybe armor, maybe wings, maybe you know, have all kind of have your own um, your own confidence, your own glory, even. Mm-hmm. You know, the glory the glory revealed inside of you. From, but you know that it doesn't come from you alone. It comes from something much higher. Wow. No, it reminds me too of uh, the saying that Bruce Lee used to use all the time too. Is that uh, people, or I guess, would practice martial arts, and then people would develop some sort of system in the martial arts. And they would imitate the moves in that system for so many years and generations that that system just became lost of what it was actually supposed to do over the years. And they just get caught up in doing the same motions over and over again and lose all meaning of where it started. Right, right. So the same thing for like maybe the Catholic Church. I mean, in the beginning of the church, I mean, they had a lot of these Gnostic texts that, that got hidden away. And Yeah, I think the Dead Sea of- Scrolls and stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Even even a lot of the teachings of Jesus were were pushed aside as as maybe blasphemy or they didn't believe it because they thought it could be of the devil. You know they they got that kind of uh, mentality where they it was of a lot of fear, and uh, and then they just kind of but they still hoped that I think even as they threw it to the side, they still hoped that it could be real. They just didn't want to hurt themselves like where they could go to hell or something like that. You know. Yeah. So um. That's where you know it's been. Just this has been such a process for so many years. It's like even that I, even though I haven't lived it, I haven't lived all those years. I have only lived twenty seven years. I still feel it in my in my DNA, or I still feel it in my mind, where it's still a part of who I am because I've always been taught these things. That this is my history. This is my ancestors. This is what's happened to my to the planet, and so it's still a part of who I am, even though I never actually lived those lives that yeah. I know. Of. No, I was just I was just gonna ask too. It's like uh, the next slide we got here is uh, one of the Anunnaki birdmen, and he's holding the the pine cone, and it looks like he's wearing a wristwatch. And it's like, do you believe that this was a person wearing like a bird mask, or do you believe that there actually was people that had animal type heads? Oh yeah, I mean I didn't even notice the actual watch there. You just pointed that out, but um, yeah, it's got the twelve petals that match the zodiacs and everything on that wristwatch. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that it's very possible that there are actual beings that, you know, are are, are birds like that, and, and even that they could speak English. And if they can't speak English, that they speak the, some other language that, that, that we're learning right now, that we're trying, that they're trying to teach us as, even as, like, parents, even, you know, as, like, you know, they, they want to teach us to be strong, have our own glory, really, in our own, just, because I feel like if you're going to live for eternity, you need this to enjoy it. Right, but yeah. they still want us. They still want us to have respect, and not have it turn into something where we use it for to be evil. And you know, we still need to realize that. Yeah, maybe we do become a god one day, or like a god, or we 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 can imagine it to be like a god right now. But we'll yeah. still realize that we're we're not the highest here. That that there's still other, and they they're good. They're they're actually looking out for us. Yeah. Now I often wonder if these bird creatures are actually existing in like another dimension, sort of like how it's always shaman that seem to be able to communicate with these guys, and maybe they are able to come over to our plane, but I think that really they are taking or living in another dimension sort of thing, right? Maybe, maybe right. Maybe it's it's really just a part of the the programming of the teaching, 
in that, you know, it's a symbol. It's a representation. Or, I mean, I believe that they really are real beings. Or just, yeah. just, just for an example, like a video game. These beings are in video games. I mean, you can always program a video game with a giant, you know, bird and stuff like that. But who, who is the bird? If you, if you were to enter into the video game yourself, yeah. then so I mean, it, there's whole there's a whole list of what what it could be. But I mean, I feel like that it's. I don't think they mean us harm because you know if they did, I think they would have already done it. Yeah, that's true. No, it's weird too. It's like I was looking into the ancient text about where these like uh, beings came from that had like the the animal type features and I found some Sumerians talking about how uh, if someone got really sick or like uh, injured really bad and that the gods wanted to rep restore them the way they did it is they would transform people into an animal form and then once they were in an animal form they would heal better so it almost reminds me of like I don't know if anyone's watched the Transformers so they always had to transform back into another shape like uh, go from a robot into a car so that they could recharge so it's almost like maybe people really do have like an animal form to them that we're just not familiar with. Sort of like how the natives talk about how we have like a, a native or an animal form to us, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely interesting to think about. And I, yeah, I mean, like that little thing you just told me there about how they used to do that. I didn't know that. Yeah. And and I think that as the truth leaders, the, you're a truth leader. So everybody, we're, as we come together, as we do these maybe videos or we talk to each other, we're going to learn from each other, and that's another part of it as well. And then same thing when we meet these extraterrestrials. I feel like that, honestly, they can they want us to feel like we can teach them something. Yeah. And because, I mean, otherwise, why would they want to be around us if they can't learn anything from us? I think they're going to get something from us, and they're also going to teach us as well. Yeah, like uh, like we mentioned on the show before, how they, they're immortal and they, they envy our way of dying. So it's like we're teaching them what it's like to be mortal. And they've lived for thousands and thousands of years. So it's something they've they've lost touch with of what it's like to live and die. Yeah, so it's it's just going to be amazing. And, and I, I think that the possibilities are endless, you know. And this, oh, yeah, yeah, this photo here, I feel like this is kind of like a re representation of you having your armor. You know, like say I, I, I took a, 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 a travel to a different galaxy and I landed on a planet. Yeah. I'm going to know who I am. I don't have to question it. You know, so if I'm surrounded by barbarians, even if I'm wearing the suit, I'm going to know that, you know, and I'm connected to something much higher. Maybe I do have access to technology, but I know that I can't show them this technology because if I did, they wouldn't understand it. So almost like they're like my children. And so it's kind of like this This is a representation to me as like I have my own personal, you know, armor of, of eternity on. And, and, and the goal is to get everybody equipped, but it does take, I feel, it takes this type of life that we, we're living right now to, to, to get this because we have to just come to a point of almost like you've had enough, but it's still that's a good thing because it, it makes you rise up into something greater. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been a bit of a stressful year for me, and our last year was, and I kind of get that impression. It's like, sure, I'm going through all this stuff, but maybe it's for something good in the end, hopefully. Mm -hmm. No, so uh, what's the next slide we got? Oh, yeah, the, the more you research, the crazier you sound to ignorant people. I can definitely relate to this one. Yeah, and, and I was kind of hesitant on giving it to you, but I, or I was going to post it earlier, and I said I don't know if I want to post it because, it is, I mean, it is true to a certain degree, but, I mean, I feel like what I want to get, I want to get to the point where I don't sound crazy anymore, where yeah. it's like I've done so much studying and so much, you know, growth that people are just like, wow, this is amazing instead, you know. and uh, but, but, I mean, I still feel like that there's going to be always beings in this universe regardless possibly that are always on this this level that we're coming from right now other yeah. beings and even beings in our own reality we don't really know the full story of it maybe, maybe the guy down the street is not even in our same in our same uh, year maybe he's in the year 1900 yeah. mentally you know you don't really know how this whole process work or maybe he's just he's not even real at all and and so this right here for me is like, you know, you just have to be strong in your own truth and in the truth. And so that's why it's like no matter what anybody says, even if the whole world was to call me crazy, yeah. I would say to myself, 
I just know that these people are ignorant. Like they don't, and the ignorant isn't me, doesn't mean that they're they're like totally retarded. It just means that they they have not come to the place of understanding yet. Like they just haven't. And I was ignorant at some point in my life. Yeah. Well, we always go just, through stages of ignorance throughout life. It seems too. Right? No matter how much you know, there's always something more that you haven't discovered yet. Right? And technically, I'm still ignorant. We're all still ignorant because we're still on planet Earth and we still haven't really met extraterrestrials, or I haven't. And most, you know, so we're still in a form of, and even maybe we're always going to be in that form of ignorance. But so yeah. that's why I was kind of hesitant to, to use that. And but I feel like that, you know, it's rough for on the planet where there's certain people that just, you know, are having a hard time understanding. But maybe it's for a reason. Maybe. Just us personally, we're gonna catapult to to the ascension or or to a different way, and and we're gonna come to find out that those people were there for a reason, not because they were condemned, not because they were less than us, but because really that's what just they needed. And it, part of it, them coming in our reality and us feeling that friction was what we needed to get to where we're going. Yeah. And so there's there we're just gonna come to find out a higher order of things and and so i think that it's really going to get beautiful and it just takes time nice now, i was going to ask you too it's like it's something i've encountered like relating to this slide we were just looking at like have you managed to keep your friends and family or have they outcast you for doing this sort of thing and it's like i know i've lost friends family girlfriends everything because talking about this sort of stuff and i don't know some days i wonder why i'm still doing it because it's not easy to do right so uh, yeah. have, you, have you had that in your life or are I've, people I've been had supportive? Quite a, bit, quite a bit of something like that. In fact, I've been in, probably I've been admitted into mental hospitals probably about 15 times. Oh, no shit. Uh, because, you know, I was, I, I was experimenting with reality. I mean, I've done crazy stuff that I don't even like to mention, but I've, it was to test really, really reality itself. But it, it was a lot of growth and it was a lot of mistakes. I was just, I was never afraid to make mistakes. So yeah. I did lose, I mean, I lost a, a lot of contact with a lot of friends. Like, I was never that person to go to college and then have, like, the college buddies and then go to go into banking and then have, like, the college banking buddies and and know each other. I, I do have some friends that I've known for quite a while, though, like maybe 10 years. And, you know, I know I have a couple close ones, but they're, I've just come to a place of not really being affected by others' judgment. Yeah, no, that's I, how I, I try to look at it, too. Like, you can't please everyone and... My cousin has a good uh, way of talking about it too. She says like, uh, like you know when horses are racing that they put on those blinders that you can't see or that the horse mm -hmm. can't see. And it was like uh, the whole reason they do that is so that the horse doesn't get distracted by the other horses around them during the race so that they can just sort of stay on track and go their own separate way. So I sort of wonder if that's an, al an analogy to look at it. It's like, sure, you can pay attention to what all the people around the world are doing, but you got to keep on track yourself sort of thing too right exactly and maybe even that's what, what the extraterrestrials have done with all of us that we really do just have this own personal kind of like path that we're going to take that's been set up for us and i can't even begin to understand anybody else's really fully i just can see mine and i think you're a part of it that we've met here that that you you're on this journey of, of we've really connected here and Somehow we, we we came together so for some reason you were online at that moment to see my video and somehow it got fed to you or however yeah, it was. I was wondering that too. It's like I was just browsing Facebook the one day and then all of a sudden this video link popped up and it was you talking about aliens. I was like, could have totally missed it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, thank God that I managed to get a hold of you and got you on the show because it's it's really tough to get people that are bold enough to talk about this. Like even my family has told me it's like you shouldn't tell people about the light beings because everyone's going to think you're crazy. So Sort of thing right so yeah so, so i don't know it's good to meet other people that have like minds in, in this sort of field right because you don't want to be stuck alone in it because being alone in any situation is not really a great great thing right? right and so that's what i try to i just try to encourage people to do this more and more where they they're not afraid to meet people they're not afraid to speak out because good things will come from it yeah, maybe a certain amount of people will call you crazy, but then you're gonna you're gonna truly find those other true leaders more and more, you know, more and more and more. So 
Now, yeah, the, the weirdest thing that happened to me once is like I had this friend that we used to hang out all the time for like, I don't know, five, six years or so, almost like every day playing video games, playing poker and stuff. And then one day, I don't know why, but I decided to mention my encounter with the light beings. Never seen the guy again. It's like he just never came over. And I was like, really? It's like just mentioning the light beings for like a minute or two is enough to totally destroy a friendship. But I guess to, to some people, it's just uh, out of their league sort of thing, right? Yeah, they just, you know, they're not prepared. And my hope is is even maybe over the course of a thousand years that, the, you know, maybe a guy like that will come back and say, you know what, you know, you were right. It was yeah. just, it wasn't his time to, to fully be unified to you. And I hope it comes before a thousand years. I mean, I in, in fact, I have um, I have a son. I can't see my son. And I and I had a kid with a girl when I was young. Okay. And she, she has always been under the impression that I was mentally ill, that... You know, that my, I wasn't ready to see my son. And, you know, maybe it is true. Maybe I wasn't ready to see my son. But at the same time, I've had to face that persecution. And I still, I didn't listen to her when she says, oh, I'm mentally ill. I said, it encouraged me even to be better. Yeah. To, to continue to look. So that's just an example of, you know, hopefully somewhere down the line, then, you know, th it'll be unified. And, and we can come to a common ground here that, you know, I did what I was supposed to do. She did what she was supposed to do. And then we can we can uh, move forward. Yeah, I hope that works out for you in the end. That must be a really tough situation. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. Uh, we'll get on to the next slide. Oh, yeah, I was just going to show you what the light beings look like. And uh, if anyone wants to see, like, a video clip of what they look like, there was a movie called Knowing with uh, Nicolas Cage that came out, I guess, maybe it was quite a few years ago now, but... They have a scene in that movie where light beings come out, and they looked almost identical to what I saw. So if anyone mm. wants to see it, I don't know. Like, It's neat that the director who made that movie, Knowing, went on to make another movie called uh, Dark City. And then that Dark City touches on the idea that the, the universe is a simulation and all that. So it's almost like some people in Hollywood are in the know, right? Do you ever wonder about that? Like, Do people in Hollywood no, actually no. know what's going I on? I mean, I've... I mean, uh, under the impression that many people in Hollywood are, are extraterrestrials themselves. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, it would make sense, they, yeah, because how else could they control it so easily? Right? That they're actually here to help, you know, or, or like I said, they could be something much, much higher than we can even understand. You know, maybe uh, a light being, or maybe they are just, just. They're, I mean, I think that they're just brothers and sisters, anyways, that that are just on this planet for a specific role. To, to do what they did so and they helped me out and a guy like me kind of supports their whole thing you know sometimes or many other people supports what they do you nice. know yeah and uh, I, I actually do a radio show on a 98.5 fm here local in my city and uh, we covered ufo topics and like aliens and everything all the time and one of the shows we did was on a uh, cattle mutilation and the theory that ufos are abducting cattle to do tests on them have you ever looked into that theory at all, or? Oh, I've I, yeah, I've heard a lot of things about how, what they're doing, and I think I even read a book one time where it was saying that they were trying to uh, fight because the the cattle or something like that were in danger of of dying, or that we were in danger of dying because of the way that they were evolving the mm. the, the meat itself. So they were trying to fix that error. Oh, like uh, how mad cow disease came out there, and they were trying to stop it from spreading, right? Right, or they were trying to even, I forget exactly how it was worded, but there was something going on where they, that the way that they were evolving, that if, if they didn't fix it, that in, in a certain amount of years, then they would be, they, they would be mutilated yeah. to a point where we couldn't even eat them, I think. Now, um, during the radio show when we talked about this topic, it came up too that uh, cattle were the best way to test how the radiation was being distributed on the planet, and if it was too high in certain areas to become dangerous. So it's almost like the aliens or the UFOs are testing cattle to make sure that the Earth is still decent enough for people to live in, or maybe... Uh, we even discussed maybe the Anunnaki are planning on returning to the Earth and they want to make sure like this is a probe to, to test to make sure the Earth is a safe place for them to return to. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I've heard many stories about how that certain aliens are actually our future selves, that they're from the future somehow. Yeah. I don't know how that works or how time travel works, but I've heard from many different sources that time travel is real. Then I've heard from other people that have had contact that it's not real. But I think that it's just the way that we understand it is we don't understand it fully. But yeah. the whole the whole thing, what I'm saying about this is, is that 
I, I feel like we don't need to eat the meat of, of, of cattle that science itself can, like, for, like, for example, a food particle replicator. Yeah, could like just Star repl- Trek, yeah. <laughs> could replicate the meat, you know, even better than we can cook it. We don't need to kill them anymore. But what, what, where was the process of them actually learning how to replicate the meat over time? And maybe this process in itself was a part of them, you know, the whole thing with them mutilating uh, or, or abducting the cattle. It, it could be happening in a different time frame, a different time reality. Yeah. You know, because I hear a lot about how the greys, they're not even really existing in our dimension, that it's more of their, they're existing in almost like a dream state dimension. Okay. So there's just a mystery behind it, but I feel like that, what does it take for us to appreciate the meat? I mean, I think that a, a part of me appreciating meat is, is that the fact I know that they were killed and that they were brought to me. Yeah. Not that I, when I go to the grocery store, I don't see that anymore. I'm just like, oh, this is meat. You know what I mean? I don't even understand. Like, I'm not. I'm not saying, oh, I love that the animal was killed and how I'm gonna suck on its meat. Like, I don't think. Like, I think to me that's nasty. Yeah, but well, I, I think there's I said, a, there's an element of sacrifice to it. Like the Bible talked about Cain and Abel being involved in sacrifices, and I'm wondering if we're still killing all these animals because some people are really into the sacrifice thing still. Right? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's it's horrible the way that they treat animals, but um, it's I, I think that we can move to a level where we can just like like for example, I go on Google, I type in you know I want I want a steak and cheese or whatever, boom, and then all of a sudden I press the button and I have the little machine here, and, and then it just appears, yeah. poof, because of the, it rearranges the particles. There's a certain code to the way that it can be rearranged. Yeah. High level science, even even extraterrestrial high level science, boom, I have it. There's no killing anymore, you know? Yeah, yeah. we should be able to get to that point where we're no longer required to kill animals for meat. But and, and right. Corey Good, I don't know if you've heard of him, but he says that they have this, that this is going to be one of the first technologies that they're going to let us have. I yeah. don't know if, if it's 100% the truth, but... Yeah, let's hope so. Because, man, seeing those animal torturing videos on YouTube and what goes on in the slaughter mills, it's, it's really horrible when you think about that humanity still hasn't progressed past that point yet, but... No, I was just going to mention, too, that uh, UFOs, like, uh, when they were abducting these cattle, they slaughtered them pretty badly. And in some cases, there was even humans that got slaughtered like this by UFOs. So if anyone's, like, really keen on seeing UFOs, like, you got to be careful. It's not always going to be a, a paradise experience, but something like that could also happen. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say, you know. I mean, even... It's hard to say. Like I could say, oh, maybe maybe if you get a story that a human was killed by a UFO, maybe it's a lie. Maybe yeah. it's a it's it's a uh, a presentation to teach you to g- give you a certain feeling to beware or to to research more. You know, it it could be any type of way to teach, but it's still. I mean, you have to be you have to be wary. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. No, when I was exploring up north, one of the, the things that I found in that area, the King Solomon's Gold Mine, uh, the Draco Stonehenge, but there was also a, an offering table up the street on a holy mountain. And back in the 70s, there was a guy that was found slaughtered up there in like some weird sacrifice way too. So people never managed to solve the mystery. And we don't know if it was like he got killed by people or maybe it was the UFOs that killed him and left his body up there. I guess we'll never know for sure, but... Yeah, it's pretty crazy stuff that can happen. Yeah. I mean, I I always just wonder, well, why haven't I been killed by them? Why haven't I, you know, why am I protected? You know, why have I even been born in in probably one of the most expensive cities in the the world? You know, why? Why me? So I think that's what everybody needs to just ask. Why me? Why am I here? And what's next, you know? No, it seems like everyone plays a, a role in the universe. Like how the, the First Nations people say that every disease has a herb in the, the forest that can cure it. And that each person on the planet really does play a, a different part about the whole plan overall coming together. So, yeah. yeah even AIDS. Even AIDS or these really these sexually transmitted diseases. I mean, it can, it can really catapult your mind into thinking, well, how, how can we have a better world? How can we even have sex in a better way? Yeah, something's going wrong here, obviously. So let's let's make it better. So that's there's still something there that that just encourages us, even even through the the bad stuff that we that we that in the moment we might think is bad. Yeah. 
Now, I guess uh, we're kind of getting close to the two-hour mark, so I was thinking maybe we'll start wrapping it up. And I just put a, a slide up here about uh, your Facebook page. Is this the, the best place for people to get a hold of you? Or? Yeah, yeah, they can you know send me a message, e hold of me here. I have another page. It says right there you can see manages Derek K. Leslie. And I'm, trying, I'm trying to link it all together. I'm not really too great at um, advertising, you know, to get a, to get a awareness out there, but I'm still... You know, I'm still trying to fix that, but yeah, just this is the main page for now. Nice. And uh, you also have a YouTube page. Did you want me to link that in the show description? Or? I do, but I, I don't have the link for it. See, that's another thing. Like I have, I have a couple YouTube videos up. I'm, I'm gonna get that rolling soon with the, with the YouTube. Cool. Just haven't really got around to it yet. I mean, this has been like, because you know, actually, in fact, maybe two or three months ago, I was really heavily involved in a Christian church where I was really, I was out there even preaching about how, you know, you have to get baptized or you'll go to hell. Wow. And so, you know, but, but I still had it in the back of my mind where this was going on. And so I was kind of, I was back and forth for a while, but now I'm really into this. So I'm really trying to expand my personal type of pages and stuff. But um, for now, I... I think the YouTube is on my my Facebook page though. You can it's right under my my five pictures there, the featured photos. Oh okay. Yeah. No, I just took a screenshot of your Facebook page because uh, I don't know. Some people were getting upset that they were getting associated with my research and me in general. So I figured I would just take a, a Facebook page photograph that didn't have a list of all my friends on the side. Right? Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, so, do you? Or what's your plans overall? I guess you're going to be doing the the presidential run, or I guess that's still in the the air. Or? Yeah, I mean, it's ten years out, you know. I mean, so it, it anything can happen in in five years or a year. But I yeah. mean, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that I I would not I would definitely consider. I mean, I don't I don't know how I could get it, the news out for people to even want to vote for me. There's so many people, at least today, that are very still stuck on that that democratic banking type thing or that republican type thought but i maybe in 10 years i mean or even before my hope is is that the aliens will, will show up in fleets tomorrow yeah. you know what i mean so you know whatever happens happens you know what i mean yeah no so i guess um yeah we covered those projects is there any other projects that you wanted to mention like uh maybe a book or anything that you got coming out or uh, no, no book in, in the in the process. I mean, it's it's maybe something, but I mean, just just mainly, just I want people to just connect with each other, and and so I'm trying to figure out a way to make that easier. So th right now, it's just like kind of through my Facebook. I'm trying to make it easy. It's just I'm still thinking of how to do that. I still work kind of like eight out five to eight hours a day, you know, and yeah, here you I get <laughs> hired. You know what I mean? I want to kind of just sit down and even do my own research. So I'm still, you know, I'm still working every day, but that's the main goal is to just make people more aware of, you know, everything that's going on. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'm thinking about coming out with a book, but it's like, man, doing this show and then doing the radio show that I do and then working at the same time, it's, there's, I don't know how people find time to watch TV. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't even watch, I just, I go on mainly just YouTube or whatever I can find on the internet. I mean, TV for me is like... You know, I, sometimes I'll watch like movie trailers. I just watch the trailer though, and that's it. You know, yeah. I don't even want to get into the movie because a lot of it is just I don't feel like it's the truth. It's just I don't know. Maybe maybe soon it can become the truth. Maybe it's in that process where movies can become a part of our imagination. It can, you can become one with the movies. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> you know? No, I was just going to say, too, that I really appreciate you coming on the show, sort of last minute sort of thing, and it's really fun to talk to someone about UFOs that takes it serious, too. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. And if, if you're ever wanting to talk about UFOs some more, it's like I usually got a time slot open about once a month or even once a year if you want to come on the show and do it. That'd be cool. Yeah, man, for sure. We should, you know, definitely do this more and just get, get the news out. So I appreciate you having me on and... Yeah, man, it was great to meet you here on the live video. And yeah, man, stay connected either cool. way. All right, sounds good. And uh, make sure that uh, everyone checks out Derek's work. And uh, I'm going to update some links in the show description. And yeah, if you want to share this video, please go right ahead. And heck, if you even want to download it and put it to your own YouTube channel, you can if you want. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right, so best of luck uh, in the future, and uh, if you manage to make it for the presidential run, if I lived in the States, I think I would vote for you. 
All right, thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. And hopefully, maybe I can get to that rock someday soon. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll, maybe I'll be able to come back with an episode about how that trip went and if I managed to see a UFO again or not. Or we'll see how it goes. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that it doesn't turn out like one of those cattle mutilation situations. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll be all right. <laughs> cool. Thanks. All right. Nice to meet you, Derek. And uh, take care. And uh, thanks again for being on the show. All right, man. All, all right. right, good. All right. See you later, man. Yep, Peace. see you. All right, everybody. That was uh, Derek Leslie, and it's like, what a awesome conversation I think that was. It's like, I haven't had too many guests on for about the UFO subject, so I definitely want to talk about that more in the future. Hopefully, we can get him back on the show. Yeah, and just to let everyone know, if you're not really into the UFO type stuff material, I got a guest on tomorrow who has the alternative theory to that. So basically, he's looked at some of the ancient astronaut theories, and then he's got a different interpretation of what it could be other than aliens. So if anyone's into checking that alternative theory out, uh, the show tomorrow is going to be on at about 10 a.m. And I think I got like a good five or six guests lined up for the next few weeks. And even Kevin Najewan, the, the Ojibwe firekeeper, said he's going to come on the show. So I'm hoping Kevin gets a hold of me soon and we're able to do that show. And Yeah, and I'd really like to thank everyone for watching. It's like uh, my YouTube page or has almost made it up to, uh, what, I guess about 100 subscribers now. So I really appreciate that. And my Facebook page is really growing faster than my YouTube page. It's couple hundred views maybe 300 likes now so steadily growing and I really uh, really can't thank everyone enough for that and I guess I'll just make sure there wasn't anything else I wanted to cover before the end of the show yeah I guess I'd like to thank my family too for helping me get this uh, these new scenes going it's like that was awesome being able to have some new camera angles and stuff it's like I was uh, getting the impression that like like really when you watch a show you don't want to be seeing one camera angle all the time so it was nice to uh, that that worked out yeah okay there we go we got the the music for the end of the show so yeah everyone make sure to tune into the, the YouTube page and subscribe and like the videos and heck even share them but just make sure you share them with people that aren't gonna get too upset and that you lose all your friends and family over sharing this material you know, it's something I've gone through, and it's it's never fun to lose people like that, but... Hey, you can't please everyone, you just do what you gotta do, right? So, alright, uh, thanks everyone for tuning into the show, and uh, have a good night, and, well, I guess a good day, it's still pretty early. And yeah, and uh, happy holidays, I guess I didn't get the show in before then, so happy holidays, and happy new year, and... I hope everyone stays optimistic, as bad as things are looking now, I think uh, times are changing for the better, and... People like Derek are stepping up to the plate to become leaders, and I really hope uh, more people do the same. So, uh, yeah, thanks everyone, and take care. Have a good day. The Magi Show was brought to you by the Milky Way. I f hate this galaxy. <laughs> <laughs>